So, welcome to the Women Who Rock panel. So I want to introduce to you who we have on our panel today. And I will do it very briefly because their bios are in the program book. And then I'm also going to ask them to tell us a little bit about what they do. So first we have Biljana Lovrinovic. Biljana is the president of ACAP Cleveland. She's also an entrepreneur and she has businesses in Croatia, the US, and Bosnia. Next to her, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> Next we have Branka Chubelic. Branka, Branka is originally from Australia, Australian Croatian, who now lives in Croatia and runs a specialty wedding, destination wedding business in Croatia. So that's Branka. <laughs> we have Ms. Michelle Lucic, or Lucic, I'm not sure. Lucic. Lucic who's a native Clevelander also, and she's very involved, she's already a published author, and she's involved in public speaking about bullying and other issues related to young people, and she'll tell us a little bit more about herself as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end we have Marianne Stropke, also a native Clevelander, Croatian-American, mm -hmm. who is very successful in banking and finance and now is a consultant in that field. And she'll tell us a little bit about herself as well. So it's Marianne. <laughs> so ladies, just by briefly introducing you, I'm impressed with the work you're doing and have done and the range of industries and fields you represent. Can you please just take a couple minutes to tell us a little bit about your current work? So beyond how I introduced you, what do you do? And your journey that got you to where you are today. Okay, I'll start first since I'm right next to you. Um, is this working? No. Oh, number five is not working. It's off. Oh, it's off. Oh, okay, of course it's not working. Uh, okay. And now, is it work now? It is? No? Oh, it's working, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, so yes, my name is Pidana Lovrinovic and I'm, uh, I live in Cleveland right now, but as of a couple years ago, um, my life has been split uh, between Croatia, Bosnia, and Cleveland. Um, what that means is that I'm working on two different continents. I started uh, a consulting, marketing consulting firm here in Cleveland about three years ago and um, have decided to look into uh, Croatia and Bosnia as a place for me to expand my business and for a couple of different reasons. One of them was to work with young people in those countries as I felt that um, they needed our help. And um, so two years, year and a half ago, I started a company in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, which does IT, um, IT consulting. Hello everybody, my name is Branka Čubilić. Um, at the age of six, my parents kidnapped me and took me to Australia. I really didn't have a say in it. I lived in Australia all my life. Seven years ago, I lost my husband to cancer. And um, it's been six years since I've been living in Croatia. I decided to start a new life. And Croatia has always been on top of the list. Um, it's the passion that we all have and that's why we are all here today because we have something in common and we have the love for our country, Croatia, our motherland. After sitting um, on the split river for about uh, 12 months, um, I'm a little investor in property. I love um, real estate so I've decided to invest and then I said to myself, no, I really need to do something exciting, a little bit more than just properties. I thought, what can I do to promote Croatia? I've always promoted Croatia. Um, I decided to open up a company, Destination Weddings. Um, I have my young partner over here. She's our Jelka. Um, this is um, Jelka does all the work and I do all the talking. So it's a great combination. Um, and I said to Jelka, I said, um, you're a local here and um, I would like to open up a, a company in Croatia. And she says, are you drunk? Or what are you even smoking? You know, nobody opens up a company in Croatia. Why would you want to do that? Everybody's leaving. I said, I feel that we from the ab abroad can bring some expertise um, to Croatia. And um, who, better, who can promote Croatia better than a non-Croatian? So all my 
clients, uh, non-Croatians. So I'm hoping that by coming to America, this is my first time, that we'll be having some of the Croatian Americans coming to get married in Croatia. So 80% of our clients are English, nothing to do with um, Croatia. So they become my ambassadors to Croatia. So this is what I've been doing, promoting Croatia with a passion. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the volunteers at the ACAP here who are volunteers and have the passion. And thank you for having us here and organizing this um, fantastic event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, does it work? Okay, so hello, my name is Michelle. I am going to debunk a couple myths. No, I'm not 25, I'm 18, I'm still in high school. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's sad, I know. But um, my current work kind of starts in the past. Um, I'm first generation American, so growing up in school systems here was kind of difficult. My first language was Croatian, so the teacher would speak to me in English and I would be like, <laughs> like, it was really difficult for me to kind of connect with the group. And because of that, I ended up getting bullied a lot. I was isolated a lot, not included in almost anything. Because of that, I kind of had some time to think, like, what do I want from myself right now? What is it that I need to do for myself right now? And I was always in love with culture. I always loved learning about Croatia, what it has to bring to anyone and even other cultures. So then I got to thinking, there's other ways that I can express myself through that type of way. And I decided at 11 years old to start writing. Writing books, poems, whatever. And then at 14, I actually got published by a publishing company. Um, and now I have been on the news several times. I've had articles written about me. I love to do public speeches about bullying, how you can prevent it, how you can help motivate yourself to keep going, pushing forward. <laughs> anyway, um, and now my current work is actually kind of interesting. Um, I'm getting published again. This time it's a psychology, psychology research essay through the Journal of Student Research. I also finished a year abroad in Germany, where I got to learn German, and I got to learn more culture, which is a win-win for me. Um, and it was also funded by the government. So I'm really excited to learn about the Domovina project. I'm really excited that we have something like that for Croatian Americans now. So I'm hoping eventually I could get involved in some way with that too. Wow. <laughs> So two things, uh, I'm not 18 and I am easily the least interesting person on the panel uh, with my esteemed uh, female colleagues here. Uh, I'm Marianne Strapke, I am a native Clevelander. I will tell you that I ended up in financial services because I couldn't decide what to do. So I had two majors and a minor. One of my majors in college was Spanish. I didn't tip anybody off to the fact that I uh, was a native Croatian speaker, so languages came easily to me. So I fell into a profession and found that by utilizing a more general skill set, things that I learned every day, how to organize my time, how to be appropriate, professional, bring myself to work every day in the best possible fashion, I was able to take the least interesting jobs and put a little fun in them. And that has been a rewarding career. So as a result, I've spent the last year consulting with banks. Uh, you think that is boring. Well, the fact is that the financial services um, providers around the globe need our help. You know, we're consumers. We drive a lot of behavior today, and most obviously through digital channels. So if we're not thinking about customers and health, from a financial perspective, we're missing the boat. So I'm really excited about my career, and I'm a very proud Croatian. I have the least Croatian name, probably, out of the entire grouping <laughs> of all of us. But I will say one thing. Uh, my parents emigrated in one period of time here where it was expected that we assimilate. So I spent most of my childhood, much like you, Michelle, actually spoke Croatian at home. When I had to go to kindergarten, 
I was confronted with the possibility that people were going to speak English to me. And I spent a good amount of time in front of the television set mimicking the newscasters so I can take the Croatian accent and the movement of our tongues and our cheeks and make the very flat Croatian A. So if anybody else can relate to that, uh, I will tell you that it has served me well because I think it's helped me understand people of all nationalities and backgrounds, and I think it makes us better as Croatians. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Well, I let me introduce you. Catherine Sradel is moderating the next panel that starts right after this one. So I asked Catherine to join us also on the on the stage. So because we're going to we're going to move fast the next couple of hours. I don't know if your mic is working yet. Just tell us a little bit about Thanks. yourself. Thank, thank you, everybody. I'm Catherine Shreddall, and I'm going to pick up on what Marianne said about consumers. I'm a consumer behavior researcher, and I mostly research women's consumer behavior um, because I'm interested in everyday life. I have a PhD from the University of Illinois. I'm a marketing professor at Loyola University of Chicago and um, a visiting professor at the University of Zagreb Faculty of Economics and Business. I'm also an entrepreneur. I have a consulting firm called 385, and we do digital and social media marketing. And um, my project manager, Monica Bellin, is here. Hi, Monica. Um, so um, I researched for my dissertation and my subsequent work, I researched privatization processes and how they affected every people in everyday life in Croatia. And I did ethnographic research with the anthropologist who spoke earlier, we'll know what that is. And I spoke to people about their everyday lives and sort of the, how things like family meals change when you have to start working from 9 to 4.30 instead of you know, 7 to 3. And these everyday life stories that I kept hearing were stories of women's lives. And it was very life-changing for me to hear those stories and to put them into academic research articles that everybody else is reading who is not Croatian to learn more about how we as people with everyday lives experience uh, privatization, European Union integration, and so on. And I guess I got a lot of strength from hearing those stories and it's great to be part of this panel here today to continue that. So thank you, ladies. So part of the mission of ACAP is to make connections between Croatia and the US, Canada and Australia and beyond. So I'm curious, Biljana and um, Branka, what are the challenges in opening business in Croatia or in Bosnia? Just what are some of the challenges and what are some of the lessons that you've learned? Should I go first or do you want to you go first? first. Okay. Uh, of course, administration is always one challenge that everybody talks about in Croatia or even in Bosnia. Uh, there is a term we call chasing papers, meaning that you are going to uh, go to many different offices, right, in order to take care of one form that you may need to open up business. That is still the case in Bosnia. I know in Croatia things are getting a little bit better. So I always say, uh, if you are going to open up a business in Bosnia, you bring really good tennis shoes because you're going to be visiting a lot of offices. Um, but in the end, um, I think uh, ha having you know that experience of you know how difficult it is maybe in Bo in country like Bosnia to to open up a business. I I think communicating that right to back to them and explaining how easy it is here. You go online, you register, within a couple of minutes you have an LLC. And for much less than you would have that in Croatia, for example, or Bosnia. So it really helps. And I think those are you know, some challenges that I experienced. And I think they can deter somebody from opening up a business if they don't know the country or they don't have really the passion to be there. So that is kind of like one of my big takeaways from opening up the business there. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, one of the hurdles that we have in Croatia, coming from America or from Australia, which the countries, um, like you said, you can open up a, a business, um, you know, have a $2 company, buy a $2 company and you do it online. There's no problems. It's, um, in Croatia, you really have to, I believe you need to have a 
a local with you to guide you. Um, that being someone who is very much experienced in business or um, like for myself, it's um, being having a partner who is a local and she is also, um, in, she worked in corporate, so she understood. But going from one door to another door and then you're waiting and takes you about three, four days, so you need a lot of time to open up a company in Croatia. Um, Dreamtime, a uh, company, when I got there, they said to me, Dreamtime, what does that mean in Croatian? And I said, look, it's an abri Aboriginal word for storytelling. I wanted to bring a little bit of Australiana with me to Croatia um, and uh, dream time meaning uh, finding your roots through the ancestors, the law of the Aboriginal people. And for me, dream time was finding my roots in Croatia. And dream time is for my couples who come to Croatia and get married, it's their dream time. So I wanted to do a synergy. So I said, go to Wikipedia and you will find it. So I had a wonderful lady who was there at the counter and she was great in Split and it took me 10 days to open up my company. It went quite smoothly, so all the locals are saying, how much did you pay them? Mm. And I said, my God, I didn't even buy them a cup of coffee. So for me, it was a, quite a good experience. But buying a car or buying your properties, that's a different story. I believe that a lot of us have relatives in um, Croatia, and we sort of lean on our relatives, what our relatives will say, do this, get yourself a good lawyer, number one, before you do anything, and consult. And there's a lot of us, there's over a hundred of Croatians, uh, the, uh, Australian Croatians, talk to each other, talk to us who have come from abroad into uh, Croatia, ask us for our experiences. Uh, there's a lot of Americans, there's a huge number of Canadians, so come and talk to us. Thank you. And that's uh, another place where ACAP aspires to connect. Branka just said, get a good lawyer. Well, we have a, you know, a section, a legal section. So that's another thing that we're building to help each other, because that's really the point of what we're trying to do here also. So Michelle, for, for you, hearing about your experiences and maybe kind of being left out or something because of the language or whatever, I'm sure a lot of us feel that way a little bit from our various bringing smelly food to lunch and you know <laughs> different things that your American or Canadian or Australian friends didn't do necessarily. So I think we can all empathize a little bit with you. But what would you give, what kind of advice would you give now to you know looking back to maybe your early teens and how to overcome that, like some advice for them? Okay, so I'm not gonna lie. No matter what someone tells you, if it's an insult, it's gonna hurt. I'm not gonna say, oh, just don't worry about it. Everything will be okay, because that's not the truth. It's gonna hurt. However, that does not mean what you hear from others should affect you in your daily life. If someone insults you, good for them. What does that show? They're lower than you. That shows that they're ignorant. They don't understand what you're going through in life. They don't know. What you need to remember is to give 120% of yourself every single day. No matter what they say, it doesn't matter. If I bring chavapi to lunch and they're like, ew, what is that? I'm gonna be like, that's my food. You eat this during lunch. Don't let what they say affect you physically because the showing of that is only gonna make it worse. They're only gonna keep attacking you. And don't let that pain control how you live the rest of your life. Because once you let that control you for the rest of your life, you're only going lower and lower and lower. They're feeding off of you to make themselves feel more important. You gotta remember to know who you are, to know what your name is, and that you are above them in every single way. Thank you, Bravo. And what Michelle just said about giving 120% or something, that's been a theme also. Like doc, last night, Dr. Mihaljevic very you know, humbly said he's not the smartest guy or most competent guy in the room, although I think all of us might say that he is one of them. But he said what differentiated him was the hard work. He said he always worked hard, 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 harder than anybody. And earlier today, Elvis said the same thing about working hard and you know that's kind of in our Croatian uh, DNA 
and you mentioned that again today. So I just wanted to point that out, that that's been a theme of this conference, this Croatian American conference. So Marianne, I have a question for you. What, in addition to your banking and financial success, I'm very interested in what you've done in the community, your civic engagement. Can you tell us a little bit about what, where you're involved and where you have been involved, sure. and then um, what you're doing now, and what was the impetus for you to, to do that, to get involved in that way? Uh, so today I am involved with the United Way, uh, both in Geauga County where I live and within Greater Cleveland, so the, the bigger chapter here in Cleveland, and have done a number of different stints on boards, uh, whether it's the Museum of Contemporary Art here in Cleveland, which we were very proud uh, during my tenure on the board to build the iconic building by Rashid Musabi. Uh, so that was tremendous. And I have also been engaged in the St. Clair uh, Superior Community Development Corporation, which here locally was the initial uh, landing point for Croatians. So throughout my time, regardless of whether it was an economic development organization, an arts organization, or health and human services, the key was it wasn't about me, it was about people that we serve. And I can tell you, I got that directly from my mom, who spent her time, whether it was giving away strudla, inviting people to the house, it was a sense of purpose that you were serving others. So it was a very easy thing to pick up, to learn, and by the way, uh, we need lots of people involved. So all of us are involved in ACAP and other organizations, particularly younger people, uh, to join organizations like the United Way or smaller ones, whatever you're passionate about, and help others. It's a really big opportunity for all of us. Thank you. Marianne. And that also, that commentary brings us here also, and that was a charge again by Elvis, like what are you all in this room doing to keep all of this going? And so the Association of Croatian American Professionals, the idea is this, like those of us who are at a certain place in our lives and careers, to help those coming behind us, to help us in our current careers make connections. And again, that's that, that drive, that impetus to contribute and to be involved. Great. So thank you. Great. Catherine, can you tell us a little bit about some of the um, challenges of doing your research in Croatia for your American PhD? The biggest challenge was um, all the paperwork on the U.S. side and the university process. So if anybody's in a U.S. university, it's a massive amount of paperwork and application and stress to um, get your grant applications finished that you have to have to research abroad. Um, Dr. Mihailovic yesterday said it's very important to choose a good mentor. So. That's very important. If you have any questions about the process, because it's the same at every university in the US, please email me. I think Elvis said today, what are you going to do after the conference? So please email me if you are a graduate student and you are interested in doing your field work in Croatia. And I will be happy to share any knowledge of our experience I might have. When I got to Croatia, uh, I was really lucky. Uh, all the doors were open probably because of the grants that I had, and it just was luck that all the doors were open. At the University of Zagreb, the professor I work with is now emeritus. Her name is Natasha Renko. Maybe some people know her name here. And um, data collection went fine. Yeah, I, it was wonderful. I'd go back and do it again in a heartbeat. And, and I and had a good time. And, yeah, thank you. And you bring up a good point, too. Like, you've noticed that we're just moving very quickly, and, you know, we respect all the speakers and panelists. We just don't have time to get everyone up here. So you make a good point. Come find us. If you're interested in any of these areas, just look for us the rest of the day, tonight, tomorrow, across the street. We're going to have that space over there. So do. I have two more questions, um, but We'll see if I can get through them. So let me tell you the two questions and then you guys can decide which one you want to answer first. So the one is like, as women who rock, so women, have you felt during your life and career that you had extra challenges to face being a woman? So I'm gonna put both of them out there and let's talk 
until we run out of time to get the next group going. So were there specific challenges as being a woman? And then the other question you can answer, whichever one you want first, what are the ways that you can envision yourselves and your work intersecting and interacting with Croatia and with other Croatian Americans? So challenges being a woman, and how do you envision intersecting with Croatia? We'll just start with you again. Okay, sounds good. Um, Quite frankly, I don't ever, I think I, I ever had problems being a woman. I feel like I somehow always got through things that I always wanted to get done. So I, if I wanted to do it, I found a way to do it. So. Um, and then second thing, oh my goodness, opportunities are enormous. I mean, look at this room here. I mean, all of us can do, it, just in your careers, um, things that you do, how much you can contribute. You can contribute through mentorship. You can actually look at, into opportunities with Croatia as um, you know, maybe opening up a business, maybe finding a job in Croatia. And for me, it's been an, an excellent opportunity that I was able to go back to my hometown in Bosnia Herzegovina and open up a company there. And it's, it's, it's been really, really an eye-opener on many levels. I left as a little girl. I was 11. Actually, I turned exactly 11 years old on that day when I left. And when I came back, I've seen how much has changed. But still, I found myself connected with the culture, and I saw a lot of opportunities for me. And I continue to see them, and I'm looking forward to expanding um, the business there in Bosnia and, of course, Croatia. And I'm also looking forward to helping anybody who is interested in maybe doing project together or um, staying connected. Thank you. I think um, being a woman is um, it's a God's gift because we're multitasked and we can do many, many things. It's Mother Earth. So, um, sorry gentlemen, but that's the way it is. But I think it's being persistent and don't allow these obstacles to get into your way. When you see the men at the bar sitting around drinking and signing a contract because it's a boys club, it's a little bit harder for the women. So we have to prove ourselves that we are capable of doing what we are doing. Second of all, I mean, that was an experience that I had when I started to renovate my first apartment in Croatia. I got all the men together to all the workers and they said, where's Mr. Chubelic? And I said, ha, here I am. <laughs> you, you, me. So that was the first obstacle. A little bit in Croatia, a little bit more chauvinistic, I think, than America or, or Australia. Sorry, boys. But um, uh, second of all, I think, um, you know, we are a bridge between the two countries. I love Croatia, and every one of you here loves Croatia. That's why you're here. Um, we can contribute, come and open up a business, um, so the young people in Croatia will stay in Croatia. It's fine for them to go abroad, get knowledge, but we need them to come back. Um, you. Basically, you know, Ljuba na sveže ispaja. Thank you. Um, so the only type of challenge, per se, I've had with being a woman is when I would do karate, actually. Um, it's a male-dominated sport, needless to say. I was kind of always an outcast, so to say, but I didn't care. And I kept working through it, and I actually ended up getting uh, induction into the World Karate Union Hall of Fame a couple years ago. Because I worked hard, I didn't care what they said, kept going. And that's something that I will remember for the rest of my life. It doesn't matter what they say about you, keep going. And it's not even just for girls. Men get harassed too. It's just a thing we're going to have to live with for the rest of our lives. And we just have to keep remembering that we're better than them. <laughs> yeah, we're better than everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, Something I do want to look into for my future though, since I am literally obsessed with culture, um, is going into the Department of State or something like that, working at a consulate or an embassy in Croatia, 
trying to just get involved in helping with world peace, with interconnecting people in different lands, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. And Miriam? So I'll reverse it. I, I think in the financial services or banking side, it is tough. I would love to be able to say it's easy to go into Croatia, but it is not. Uh, we'd like to work to a day where that is because it would be terrific if I can retire on the coast. That'd be great. So it, it's a work in process. Um, I'm a little bit different on this panel. I will say that I, I think being a woman has made it harder. I'm in a tough sector. Uh, I, it might be my age and stage, but there's been an awful lot. So my ask of all of you is this. If we can remember to have our bias be towards talent and not otherness, whether it's gender or other issues, we'll get further faster. Because the reality is, if we're comfortable working together, regardless of where we come from, all of that goes away. And the most talented people do the most amazing things. Thank you. I'm getting signals, Catherine, from mm -hmm. my team here that I'm going over time. So you are transitioning us to next. So how about if we have a round of applause for the women who rock. Thank you.